The Samsung HWQ900A houses 16 audio drivers and as a result has a 7.1.2 channel configuration. Now in this review we'll be seeing if it's actually worth its price tag because in the UK it can be found for roughly £850 while in the US it can be found for around $1,200. Now to kick off this review I have to talk about its design and here subjectively I'm not too fond of the fabric material that sits at the top and at the front side of the soundbar and the reason behind this is because it can get a little bit dirty and or indeed attract some dust particles. Nevertheless, the plastic inserts around the side of the soundbar do give it a little bit of a better design. Now, in terms of the overall size of it, it's a little bit wide and a little bit long, so you'll definitely want to make sure that it fits in terms of your own setup. You can, of course, place it on a cabinet like I have or indeed wall mount it if you so wish. Now, other than the main soundbar unit, you do also have a wireless subwoofer. Wireless whereby it doesn't have to connect directly to the soundbar and indeed I had no sort of issues when it came to latency. The only thing to be bearing in mind over here is of course you're going to have to power the soundbar and the subwoofer separately so therefore you're going to have to use two wall sockets. Now for you to interact with the soundbar there's some physical buttons found at the top of it. Now while these are quite basic it allows you to power on and off or indeed adjust the volume you will also notice a small little LED screen. Now the LED screen is very useful because it gives you all the right information for example when you're adjusting certain settings or going through the different volume increments. However, the LED screen is positioned at the top and therefore means when you're sat in front of the soundbar, be it if you have it on a cabinet or let's say if you've wall mounted it, you're not going to be able to see what this display displays or indeed shows. And that is just due to its placement. In previous iterations of soundbars from the South Korean manufacturer, it was placed at the front of the soundbar, making it quite convenient for you to see what you're doing on the fly. Alas, that's not the case with the Q900A, and I really feel that Samsung should address it in future iterations of their upcoming soundbars. Now, of course, for you to adjust the settings of the soundbar, there's an included remote, which gives you far greater functionalities over the built-in buttons that are found at the top of the soundbar. Now, I've got no issues at all with the functionalities or indeed the design of the soundbar remote. It hasn't changed over previous iterations of Samsung soundbars, and quite frankly, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. Now, other than the remote, you do also have the Samsung SmartThings app, which is pretty comprehensive, although it's missing a few features. Now, through the main menu, you can see what it's coming from. In other words, the sound, and here it's connected over Wi-Fi to my Samsung TV. And then you have got the volumes, where if you change it, it does automatically pick it up instantaneously, which is pretty impressive. And then you've got the sound modes, where there's four to choose from, standard, surround, game, and adaptive. And we'll touch upon why I use adaptive more than anything. And then you've got the equalizer function, functions such as bass and treble. Although here you can see that there is a missing inclusion of adjusting each of the different levels. So in other words, the center channel, the side channels, the top firing speakers, the rears. Here you can't adjust them via the app and instead you're going to have to rely on using the remote, which I don't quite understand why Samsung have omitted it from the app. Nevertheless, you do also have a woofer control, as you can see, I've reduced it by one notch. And of course, these EQ settings and woofers will very much depend on your own room's acoustics. Speaking of which, there's an auto EQ feature, which I just really didn't feel added much in terms of my own listening experience. But of course, you can enable this if you want. Now, there's a few additional features, in other words, room calibration features, which are supported via the Q900A, although you will have to have a later or newer Samsung TV for you to have access to that, which again, I feel is a little bit disappointing given that not everyone will have a newer Samsung TV or for example, will not have a Samsung TV period. So if you don't, you'll be left with what I have over here, such as having the auto EQ function, which goes via the bass. Now speaking about the bass, you can enhance it or indeed have a voice enhancement or for example, have night mode, which reduces the bass impact. Now elsewhere through the app, if you go on the top right, you've got the device settings, whereby you can see the network status, you can go on the Bluetooth pairing mode, and you can have audio feedback enabled or disabled if you so wish. This does also have built-in Alexa. It's not something that I would use personally because I don't like having a voice assistant on my soundbar, but if it's something that you see useful, then you can of course do Amazon Alexa functions directly from your soundbar by saying, hey Alexa. You've also got Spotify settings, which you can link to Spotify, which is quite handy for those people who specifically use Spotify on a regular. Now past the app I should also talk about connectivity and here Wi-Fi is unsurprisingly supported which allows you to connect and indeed adjust your settings on the fly. 
Now elsewhere you do have Bluetooth, although the SBC codec is supported only and therefore you don't have AAC, APTX, APTXHD or the LDAC codecs to play around with, which is quite disappointing and therefore you'll want to use Bluetooth only if you're connecting up and you're not going to be wanting some higher quality audio fidelity. Now for iOS users, you'll be pleased to know that Apple AirPlay 2 is supported, allowing you to wirelessly and over Wi-Fi connect over to the soundbar and therefore play back your favorite songs or indeed whatever you're going to be listening to or consuming. Now for Android, however, the Chromecast functionality isn't built in, which is quite a shame given the price and indeed the functionalities of the Q900A. Thankfully, however, you've got two HDMI inputs and here you could plug in a Chromecast device and therefore cast to the soundbar if you so wish. Now, of course, the soundbar has an HDMI eARC or backwards compatible ARC output, which is definitely the preferred use. Now, you can connect over Wi-Fi if you've got a compatible Samsung TV or indeed use an optical connection if you so wish instead. Although HDMI will definitely be preferred if you have got a newer television. If you've even got a more expensive or indeed a later television, you'll also have eARC at your disposal and this will be great to connect over to the soundbar because you'll be able to enjoy uncompressed metadata. In other words, let's say Dolby Atmos or DTSX when you're using certain services or indeed platforms or for example certain sources such as a 4K Blu-ray player. Now before we get onto a sound demo, there are certain things I should also mention. Now as we established at the beginning of this review, this has 16 audio drivers and runs on a 7.1.2 channel configuration. Now that's pretty Pretty simple but also you will worth being bearing in mind that the soundbar also has optional rear speakers that you can purchase. I haven't tested them of course they won't be part of this audio demo but it's just something to be mindful about if you want to potentially upgrade the overall listening experience and therefore have a bit more of a room filling experience or for example if you want to upgrade later down in the line rear speakers are an optional extra that you can include on the Q900A which is not the same thing that could be said about some of the least expensive or for example some of its competitor products. Now other than that the Q Symphony feature is another headline feature for the Q Q900A or most of the A finished Samsung soundbars and again this is something that I can't test or indeed comment on because this Q Symphony feature works with only newer Samsung televisions of which I do not own. Now here it allows you to utilize the built-in speakers of the television, synchronize it with the soundbars ones and gives you a little bit more of an immersive experience at least according to Samsung's marketing. So with all of that said and done, let's get on to a sound demo. First off, we're going into a music demo where we'll be using Priya J's song, which is titled Falling. And here we'll also go through the different sound modes that the soundbar offers. Here it is adaptive, surround, standard, and also game modes to choose from. Do check out the annotations down below for you to understand which mode it's running on. Elsewhere, we'll then move to a piece to camera video. In other words, me presenting the Hyundai Ionic 5. And here I'll be using the Q Q900A's AVA function. AVA stands for Active Voice Amplifier and is supposedly going to be useful for amplifying my voice or in other words bettering the mid-range response via the center channel. Here I'll be flicking through the different modes again via the audio demo and do check out the annotations to see if you can hear the differences for yourself. Nevertheless, the screen itself supports multi-touch input and is very responsive, at no problems whatsoever in this department. 
Here it should be also said that you can play around with your audio settings and for those who are subscribed you know I do dedicated audio reviews of every vehicle that I review and as such there's one for the Ionic 5, it will be up on your pod banner, down in the description below or indeed in the pinned comments. We'll say in a nutshell with the ultimate trim that has the Bose 7 Plus 1 sound system inside, I was left a little bit disappointed specifically when I was comparing it to the likes of the Polestar 2 or the Tesla Model 3. Now I appreciate an audio demo that's compressed and using my microphones isn't quite ideal, but nevertheless let's get onto my subjective opinion. We're going to break it in terms of each frequency band and here we're going to start off with the sub bass tones. Now here the rumble that you get with bass is good and it's pronounced and you can definitely hear it given the fact it has a dedicated subwoofer unit. However it isn't as impressive as the likes of the JBL Bar 9.1 or the Creative SX5 Carrier. What I'm trying to say over here is given the price of the Q900A I was expecting a little bit more of that low end rumble but alas that's not quite the case and unfortunately it feels that it tails off on the lower echelons of the bass frequency band. Don't get me wrong, it does well and it will compete with other soundbars out of the market, but in comparison to more of the bassier orientated soundbars, it can't quite compete. Now as for its mid bass on the other hand, I feel that it's really done to perfection. Of course you can EQ it to your heart's content depending on your own room's acoustics via the app or indeed via the remote control and therefore using the LED indicator at the top of the soundbar, but here I felt that the quantity and quality was really good when I tailored it to my own preferences. I didn't feel that the bass was wobbly or uncontrolled and I felt that it was had a good sort of speed to it. No sort of complaint in this department and Samsung should be proud of their mid-bass response. Now as for the mid-range it's a little bit more of a complex answer and kind of assessment. First off, I do have to talk about the AVA function, in other words, the active voice amplifier. And here I didn't feel that it drastically changed the center channel and gave me a night and day difference when it was enabled or, for example, when it was disabled. Be it when I was watching the news or, for example, when I was listening back to my piece to camera video on Totally EV, I didn't really notice the difference when I was enabling or disabling. Yes, there was a slight difference, but not to the point where I feel that it's going to be life changing. Now, apart from that, you have, of course, got the sound modes. And here I felt the adaptive sound mode did a far better job of portraying forward sounding mids. While still sounding a little bit pushed back and recessed, it was nowhere near as V-shaped sounding as the likes of standard or surround or for example the game modes, which all of these three modes felt that they just pushed back the mid-range too much for me to actually enjoy the soundbar to its full potential. What I'm trying to convey over here is that if you want a bit more of a forward mid-range, you'll probably want to run on the adaptive mode because here it does a better job. Of course you can EQ it as I did mention through the app function, but here it will make it sound a little bit artificial if you're EQing it all that much and therefore take away from the overall accuracy in the mids. Now in comparison to some of its competitors, here the Q900A simply can't compete with the likes of the Creative SX5 Carrier, which does a far far better job of giving you forward sounding mids and which are a little bit more lifelike. Now as for the highs, they extend pretty well and give me that good top end clarity. And here I had no issues whatsoever when it came to sibilance or harshness, which meant that I could really dial up the volume of the soundbar without having sort of ear fatigue, which is definitely appreciated. Here my ears go up to around 17 kilohertz and and given my own EQ, I had no problems whatsoever. Ultimately, what I'm trying to convey over here is that the highs do a great job of giving you a really nice engaging sound and one that will give you that sort of toe tapping feeling when you're listening back to your favorite tracks. So with the frequency range out of the way, let's get onto the soundstage. And here, of course, it's one of its key selling points because it supports Dolby Atmos and also DTSX. I'll be concentrating on the former because I've got a 4K Blu-ray player with Transformers Age of Extinction, which also is filmed in Dolby Atmos and allows me to cycle between Dolby Atmos or indeed PCM. I'll be going into an audio demo now and do check out the annotations down below to understand which mode it's actually running on. Now yet again I'm not sure how much my mics were able to pick up but nevertheless here the soundstage is phenomenal. 
be it in terms of the width and depth, the imaging, the tonality, the speed, or even the instrument separation, all of which I was really left jaw dropped. Specifically, if you're gonna be utilizing metadata such as Dolby Atmos or DTSX, you're gonna be really having a room filling cinematic experience via 16 audio drivers. And this is definitely something that differentiates itself from cheaper soundbars out there on the market, be it from Samsung or one of its competitors. But let's say for example, you're like myself and you don't regularly consume Dolby Atmos or DTSX content, here still the soundbar does a phenomenal job. At least in its adaptive mode, I felt that the overall soundstage that I was getting whilst watching YouTube videos or indeed consuming regular terrestrial TV, be it digital or not digital, was still really good and definitely bettered in comparison to cheaper alternatives out there on the market. Furthermore, if I was going to be running on the different sound modes, I felt that the surround mode did give you a little bit more, well, as the name suggests, a more surround sort of experience. But as I did mention prior in this review, that it does take a hit in terms of the mid range and therefore means that while you're getting a little bit more of a room filling experience and one that will keep you a little bit more engaged, it does take a hit in terms of the overall vocals. And as a result, I felt myself leaning and usually using the adaptive sound mode instead. And so this brings me on to my verdict. Can I see myself recommending the Samsung HWQ900A? Well, the short answer is yes. I think it's pretty impressive across the board. And don't get me wrong, it has some certain flaws or indeed can be improved. Take for example its sub bass response. It could have been bettered specifically in comparison to cheaper soundbars out there on the market or indeed some of its main rivals. Its mid-range could have come a little bit more at the forefront. And as for a bit more trivial things, the LCD indicator could have been placed at the front rather than at the top and it also could have had Chromecast built in. But if you look past some of its flaws across the board, it does a great job. And as a all-rounder, I think a lot of consumers, be it video files, audio files or just regular or average Joes will find themselves really impressed with the HWQ900A. And as a result, I can see myself actively recommending it for those people who have the budget and therefore it gets my best buy award. Now I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below and of course if you've liked this independent detailed review definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.